and we are live. I'm all, I'm all, today, for anyone who's watching this later, this is just workout for my shoulders, as well as a little bit of rehab for the rotator cuff muscles. Help strengthen and keep those up to par. Um, I'll probably re-explain that as people come in and leave. So, I guess I better get into it. Alright, well first up, we are going to need to get some bands out because we're going to do some external rotation and then some resistive rotation for the shoulders because we need to work on keeping everything nice and braced as we go through the movements and just, just keep the shoulder healthy. So we'll also need to do a little bit of mobility which we will start with. Um, I'll probably actually get a little bit of warmth. And I'm warm enough. I just did some light, light boxing training for about 10 minutes, so I don't think I need to do anything crazy. So we're going to torque on the shoulder just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, yeah, as soon as I can find the bar. There it is. Mm, I bend it. Mm. So, uh, I mean, even though this is specifically pretty much just a shoulder workout rehab routine that I'm going to be doing today, I have a lot of ideas, and if I just kind of put them out there, maybe uh, maybe I'll commit to them a little bit better. Maybe they'll pique some interest and uh, get me with the right network of people to be able to do so. Um, you know, my biggest project right now that I'm working on, clearly being myself, uh, because I want to go pro. I want to go pro. Either I want to do at least one pro boxing match. The reason I want to do boxing is MMA to learn that and all the different styles to be able to get good at grappling, ground game, and everything else would take me a lot longer because there's a lot more styles that go into it to become successful versus boxing there are a lot of styles but at least it's limited to you know legally to what your arms and hands should be doing you're not going to get a surprise kick they're not going to ground tackle you um also i've talked to, to a few pro fighters and they said it's it's probably better to get into boxing because there's more longevity into it because MMA UFC style fights are, uh, they, they are, they're rough. So having longevity in those is not the biggest possibility. I mean, there's a lot of people who do make a long time out of it, but there's a lot of people who don't. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I want to do is become, at least do one pro boxing match. And uh, I, just, I just got a lot of work to do, like a lot of work to be able to get to that point. So I need to work on that. I need to, man, I got a lot to work on. I also want to do a strongman competition because I love strongman. I love picking up heavy things and I love putting them down. Mostly picking them up. When you put it down, the moment's over. It's like you kick up the leaves and the magic is lost. That was, uh, that was a good song. No one's here to enjoy it with me yet. If you're watching this later, I hope you enjoyed my terrible bit. Ooh. What am I doing with the bar? I'm cranking my shoulder. I am not even gonna try to sound smart right now. I, I am so burnt. I do not care to sound scientific or smart right now. I am just opening up my shoulder every way possible Getting all those deep, deep, deep muscles and connective tissue nice and stretched. And that was loud. And then, uh, then we're just going to do some soft tissue stretches, some basic ones uh, for the main muscles that attach onto the humerus around the shoulder joint. So, yeah, yeah, that's about as uh, scientific as I get. But there's a lot of projects that I'd like to do, you know, like I could take certain aspects of certain sports that I really enjoy and be like, I'm going to be doing this in today's video. Make like a bigger project. I'm doing a lot of small projects right now where it's maybe a short film every once in a while. And then also uh, workout videos where I'm trying to find the balance between educational and funny because I like to be funny. Um, and maybe some other stuff here and there. But I just, I want to... I want to be able to be a bit more creative and put more time into a project. Just right now, I'm not in a spot to be able to do really any any of the bigger things. 
that I really want to do. So we got a long way to go. But in the meantime, uh, words, I don't know, I'm kind of frozen up. I'm starting to wonder if my title is bad, you know what I'm saying? Maybe my title, my title is just bad. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, someone's here. Hello, you, you scared me, actually. We're doing a shoulder workout, and I'm just stretching out before the actual shoulder workout. So if you have any questions regarding shoulder health or just general fitness, please let me know. I just need to set this over to the side so I can continue stretching. Oh, my hand even left. I'm sorry. Anyway, so we are going to... We're going to... Well, we need to finish stretching, then we can do some active engagement. Oh my goodness. So, anyway, right now we're just stretching the front part of the chest, and uh, I guess I'll just continue to talk about my aspirations in the meantime. Oh, because you know, life's just in a weird, weird, uh, weird juncture right now where I was wanting to go to school, become a physical therapist, but that is still decently far away. Even if I tried speeding that up, I can. So I'm trying to figure out where to put my energy, where to put my efforts at. And uh, right now my two biggest projects that are gonna take still a really decent amount of time being a pro boxing match and competing in a strongman competition. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go one up. I want to win a pro strongman competition. I want to be world's strongest man or strongest man on earth. Simple as that. I, I want that. I'm gonna make it happen. I don't care. So, it just there's a lot of work to be to be put in to be able to get there. And so I just chip away at it every single day, and I put my best foot forward and try to find the best programs that are out there and study them, figure out why they are, and then make my own program based off that. Oh, and then I just go from there. You know, it's, it's just building slowly knowledge, mind, body, and so on and so forth until you get to that point where you can finally do what you want to do. It's, it's just a whole, a whole thing. And I just, I'm ready for it. I'm excited. I'm going to make it happen. So right now, a little bit of a nobody. So I, I have a long way to go. And that's okay. That's okay. This is me just being real, just talking how I feel, which I realize I probably should do that more often. You know, I like I like being funny, but I'm I'm ready for some uh, some big big progress towards the goals I'm setting out to do. Um, it's just one of those things. I also would love to be a full time content creator. I think it's very fun to be able to do projects all the time and create <clears throat> valuable entertainment that might even be educational or helpful to someone is, to be honest, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but I mean, I don't really know else how to, how to do that except for just online, you know, like Influencer Mr. Beast, education of someone really, Albert Einstein, but more modern, you know, and be able to balance those things, but like, do stuff for people. Food drives, clothes drives, um, maybe set up like a housing thing for the homeless or something. You know, from all over, all over, just all over. Feed the hungry, stuff like that. I think it'd be, I think it'd be really fun. And that's the stuff that I would really like to be able to do. I don't care if I get recognition for it, but I would like to be able to do that for people. Um, but yeah, um, I just, I'm trying to get to that point. I, I am, and I'm, right now I'm trying to learn how YouTube works, you know, pacing, editing thumbnails. And there's a lot of information out there, and I try to apply it the best that I can, and sometimes I just don't execute right. I don't know how I, how I just messed the marker. But it happens, it happens, as part of the process. You learn, and then you eventually pick up. Unless you're lucky enough to get, like, a mentor, which, you know, maybe someday I will. We'll see what happens. But uh, right now, I have my boxing coach is my mentor when it comes to fighting. I don't have a mentor for strongman. I just kind of watch anything and everything that Brian Shaw does. I would love to meet him. So if any of you know him or under the uh, extreme circumstance that Brian Shaw is watching this, 
Train me, please. I would love that. I would take so much advantage of any opportunity given to me right now in life. But in the meantime, let's just keep chipping away at the little stuff, making progress. That's kind of my big rant. I'll probably have more rants during the process. But in the meantime, we are just going to keep warming up, keep going through. Um, so I've stretched. I'm pretty sure I did all the stretches that I needed to do. I need to do some general uh, mobility stretches and some leg stretches because at the end of my shoulder workout, I do a little bit of legs. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have much. My brain's fuzzing up. My brain's fuzzing up. But now we're going to go through an active range of motion with this band. I just call them up and overs. Some people can't do this. Some people it really hurts their shoulders or makes them feel slurpy. To them, I would say don't do it. I would say strengthen your shoulder and work on general mobility before you start doing this. But this, this is, yeah, it, it does the job. It does the job. It's fine and dandy. It's fine and dandy. So, done this. I'm trying to remember everything that I usually do. Usually I have music in my ears. Right now I don't. So, all right. So let's flip this around. Spin it, twist it, make it into a circle. And we're gonna actively engage the back part, the external rotators of the shoulder. I learned this from a pro power lifter that trained West Side Barbell when he was younger. And he was showing me this exercise and I also saw it in Squat University. Oh, really helps open up the shoulder because it activates the muscular, the, the, the muscles to help pull those external rotation to open them up. Now, I know it's not super fun, it's not super exciting, but a lot of the small stuff is what carries over big. And I mean, my bench press is back up to 245, and that's feeling very comfortable. Um, before I got injured, I could, oh, I guarantee you, I could have thrown 315 up for one or two, because I was doing 275 for five sets of five. So that high volume and just being super comfortable at 275, I, I definitely could have done 315 at least for one. I think too, but anyway, we're just gonna keep engaging the external rotators, make sure that the rotator cuff, nice and warmed up. I'm all about injury prevention. I tell all my clients that going slow is better than a setback. Oh my goodness. Setback will take longer than just going slow. It's like the rabbit and the hare. No, that's the same thing. The tortoise and the rabbit. The bunny and the turtle. The story. You go slow, you finish the race first. So, and you have more longevity for your body. So you can live for longer. I met a lot of people in their 30s who, that's very young, who were like, yeah, I got a bad back, blew up my shoulder, my knee's terrible, knee surgery on them, arthritis, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you were way too young. And they're like, yeah, but I used to do this. I'm like, that's probably why you're in such bad shape. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, that burns. You really do need to try this. You can get these like on Amazon for like 10 bucks per set. Um, these are really cheap. So I, they're a great tool to have. Um, now, again, try and remember everything that I do. I need to do external rotations, internal rotations. Actually, I'll probably be okay with everything that I've done. I'm kind of switching those out, but I can do overhead press, resist, internal rotation. Now this one, again, this beginning stuff isn't too exciting, but then again, unless you're a fitness fanatic, most fitness stuff isn't exciting. It's not very fun. You have to enjoy the process. And then even at that, sometimes unless you're learning something really good, it's gonna give you an edge. It's not that entertaining. So, what we do here, I'm trying to find a way to show you. I really don't know how. But we're going to get resistance on the band. It's going to pull our hand down and forward. And what we want to be able to do is pull back, keep the shoulder engaged the whole time, and we're going to go through a full range of motion straight up. So we're going to back, up, press. Just like this. And I have other bands for this. But I already have this one out, so I'm just being lazy. Oh, also, 
I don't know how to play music while I'm doing a live stream because I don't know where to... Hello, Goose. Hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you for commenting. You're better than everyone else, and I can say that. I say that at the end of my videos, but uh, I'm going to say it now, live, for everyone who comments. You're better than everyone else. Thank you for commenting. So, hello, Goose. Silly Goose. It's a good name. It's a good name. I enjoy it. So, we are going to continue to just warm up, prep, and then at the end, we'll do a little general mobility for oh, our legs, and then we'll hit a couple leg day, leg exercises, because my leg day got cut short this week because my knee and my back said no, and I really don't know why. I have no idea why my back and my knee was acting up. Form and everything was good, and then just out of nowhere, bam, uncomfortable. Sometimes that's how it goes. So, so anyway, I think that's the end of the warm up routine. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some shoulder press. And I can't really train hypertrophy right now because I'm in a caloric deficit, so it's counterproductive. I'm not gonna build muscle while cutting down. There's a fine line where you can do the, uh, what do they call it? What do they call it? It's like a cut gaining, something like that, where you get real lean, but you can also put on just a little bit of muscle mass. Like, it's super slow, but you're riding the fine line. <sighs> I don't think, I mean, if I could count that as my cut, I would do that. I would do that versus a regular cut and then a regular bulk. I would just do the main gaining, you know, and then I would go into a bulk. But yeah, it's not how it works. But we're gonna just toss this over to the side for time conservation. Time conservation. Sometimes words are hard. And we're gonna do some shoulder press. I would love to do barbell shoulder press. I used, you know, why not? Why not do a little bit of barbell shoulder press? I think we should. I think we should treat ourselves. I can almost guarantee no one's watching this while actually working out. So me saying we should enjoy it means like nothing. So again, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing dynamic bench. I'm doing heavy bench. We're not gonna do barbell shoulder press. I love barbell shoulder press. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna do barbell shoulder press. I can't not do it, you know? It's a little bit awkward to do in here because the ceilings are so low for me pressing. So I can't put the 45s on each side. I have to, at max, I can put 25s on. And even then, if I'm standing nice and tall, I'll hit it because I can touch the ceiling now. So I gotta make sure that I plan that out because I don't want to just poof, two holes in the ceiling on both sides. That's not good. That's not good. So we're not gonna do that. That's nice and loud, you're welcome. We are just gonna set up for some barbell shoulder press, moderate volume, nothing crazy, just go through the motions. Maybe we can do some dynamic movements with it, have a little bit of fun, you know? Again, I think exercise and everything about it, super fun. I love talking exercise. It is, it's one of my, one of my few, but strong passions. So, it is a very strong passion of mine. So, anyway. shrimp squats and mobility will just kind of superset through there um, but we're gonna do some barbell shoulder press uh, it is my favorite I used to I was trying to master 135 like 
get it to, to where that was like part of my warm up. And when I was doing maximal strength training up to 275 on bench, I was able to comfortably do three sets of three with 135, but no more. So we're coming back, but we're coming back for everything. So th there's a saying that goes like that, and I can't remember it. So we're just gonna warm up real quick. Gotta find a comfortable position of just right outside the shoulder width to make sure everything lines up correctly. Gotta make sure I'm even on the bar. Grab it, step away from that side. Oh, there we go. Keep the lats tight. probably do two warm-up sets with just the bar and kind of feel it up from there. One thing is, is if I stay straight up and down, um, I can't get any lower. Like keeping my lats and everything tight, the bar will not drop any lower than here. And sometimes you need it to touch your chest. And I like to train through full mobility. So I get a little bit of a lean back so I can drop my shoulders just a little bit more and then press up from there. Sometimes a little bit uncomfortable. I feel like the very tippy top part of my shoulder, which I dislocated the shoulder a little over a year ago. Um, it's a tiny sharp pain, so I do got to be very mindful over that because there's a whole bunch of tiny muscles that attach through here, and you got to take care of your body. You really do. So, two more offsets with this, and then we're going to go up by 20 pounds each time, so 10 pounds on each side. Um, a lot of volume, that's okay. It's okay to have a lot of volume. Um, I mean, that's perspective. That's perspective. You got to really measure and increase and decrease your volume depending on how your body responds. And that's, that's just some pro advice right there. That's just being honest. Why am I doing a live stream? Well, because I didn't want to record today. So I figured I would just talk to all of you. Well, the people who kind of stop in and then leave, but still. To whoever may show up and stay for at least a little bit. So, we are going to do another one, kind of feel between full range and where I need to be, and where my shoulder says, hey, that's good enough. I'm, I'm in front. Yeah, we good. train shoulder press but it burns when you do it right so we are going to take a little sip of water and go from here so I am a little out of breath but not too bad like I said we're just gonna have a little bit of weight and then we're gonna go up from there so yeah yeah brain just fogged up again so mmm I, yeah, that's all I have to say at the moment. But we're going to put a little, uh, a little bit on the bar. Feel free to drop a comment or a question. Kind of one of my strong suits is reacting and talking to people. And when I talk to myself, it can be uh, above averagely boring, to say the least. that reference I hope so it was bad but I hope you got it and the orange one I'm gonna put clips on here is just in case I start having an imbalance now a lot of a lot of uh, corrective exercise happens when you notice an imbalance however I don't have mirrors 
or someone here to tell me if I have an imbalance. Closest thing I have is you whenever someone's in here. But still, it's, that's not often. So be forgiving if you see a slip up or two. Simply because I, I don't know what I'm, I can't see what I'm doing. I can only feel it. So we, we, we're just gonna keep on moving along. Keep on, keep it on, keep it on. That was gross, I do apologize. But you're welcome, all at the same time. So, now I'm not gonna lie, my shoulders are already pretty fatigued. So, we're gonna drop the volume back, we're gonna hit five reps, see how that goes, go up from there, do another five reps. We're gonna drop back the volume, because I don't know how many sets I'm gonna get in, once I get up to the top set where it's like, just, it's insane. One second. And I'm back. And we're back. But, um, as I was saying, we're just going to start cutting back the reps per set so we don't accidentally hit the volume ceiling before. Because I am going for power and strength. And I'm on a cut, so we kind of got to mitigate to where our levels are at. I don't know if that word's right, but I'm not an English teacher. So I don't, I don't know how many that was. <sighs> Do you know how many it was? How many was it? Tell me. Please. Yeah, that wasn't bad. It wasn't, if I keep the reps lower, which is where I seem to thrive, is lower reps, heavier weight. Of course, I'm not super strong, so it's not like super heavy weight. It's just heavier weight for me. So feel free to laugh. Feel free to laugh. No? You're very kind. So, we're gonna go up again by 20 pounds. Nothing crazy. So we're at 65 pounds, we're gonna go up to 85. And then hopefully 105. And then hopefully 125. And that's probably the heaviest I'll be able to get today. I don't know. If I can get above 125, I would be extremely proud of myself. Cause I haven't done barbell shoulder press in a hot minute. It's been a, it's been a while. Uh -huh. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. All right. Do do do. Do do do. That's amazing. A five pound cap plate can fit perfectly in the center between two 10 pound cap plates. Like a little little filling of a donut. It's amazing. It's, it's fantastic. So, we are just gonna keep rocking and rolling. And again, for whenever someone joins, please feel free to communicate with me. Awkward pause long enough. All right, so if we can, oh, someone drop me a like. That, that's, thank you, actually, so. All right, let's pop out five reps of this and then see if we're gonna go up or if we're just gonna do a couple more sets of this weight. It's not a lot, it's not, I know, I know. Feel free to not judge me. Or do. I really don't care. Either way. You do you. Well, funny enough, that weight is actually plenty light. 
Um, the biggest issue that slowed me down on everything is from here to here, when I'm letting the weight down, I can hear my shoulder go And that was a gross auditorial uh, recreation of the actual sound, but it is clicking, which means that there's something in there that is tight, it's overactive, um, and so it's flicking over the top head of the humoral bone. Can't remember what that's called, but it's just flicking over in there. And it's uncomfortable, it's not painful, but it's uncomfortable. So we'll probably do a couple uh, active engagement exercises real quick as I, at, right after I put on some more weight, and go from there. I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling good, so hopefully we can keep this momentum going, and if we keep, keep the momentum going, we'll be in a good place. The only downside is if I can go up from here, I'm gonna have to get the 20, well, I've got 25s over there. I just have to take all the weight off, I gotta take all the weight off and put the 25s on and go from there. Sometimes I just don't wanna do the extra step. I really don't. I'm here to work out. But honestly, moving your weights around in between each step just adds more enriched stuff to the workout itself. So we got, I literally just did the math 60 plus 45. We got 105 on the bar. 105, hopefully five reps, hopefully it feels comfortable. I need to do some active engagement um, for the back side of my shoulder because the fr it's clicking in the front side. So I'm gonna open it up just a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and knock out five reps here and see if we can jump again. If I can jump again, I'll be happy. So, and now I'll probably stop at the top set. If we can go up one more 10 pound, one more 20 pounds and do 125, unless it's super easy. Then I will stop for the day and go into lateral raises, which part of me wants to like switch that up just a little bit, you know? Like it wants, I want to do something a little bit more creative when it comes to lateral raises. I, I don't necessarily get bored. I'm entertained by the burn, the pump, and the weight itself. But let's see if we can get that shoulder stop clicking real quick. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try to get the shoulder stop clicking, get this set done, see how high we can go on this weight. And then we're on the lateral raises, which, I mean, maybe you guys have a different preference. I just like doing lateral raises. A lot of people like doing upright rows. They like doing Egyptian lateral raises. They like doing them. I'm just going to call them decline lateral raises for right now, where you're leaning over this way and you're lifting it up off the side of your body. Those, those are amazing. And maybe I'll start doing them, maybe I'll do some of the day. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yes, yeah, just clicking right there. Not right now, but I can find this spot, it is tender. Okay, that should help them do the other side just to be safe. And then we'll go ahead and hit five on that. So please don't be super um, hateful on my slight jumps when I get a little bit heavier when I, because sometimes I just get stuck in the bottom of the hole and I haven't done this in a while. So the overall exercise is more of a success to me than being perfectly strict, at least right now. At least right now. It's more of like a, a special little motivational thing to myself that's like, I can go this heavy again. You got this. I'm, you know what you're doing. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Here we go. 105. Five reps. Should be easy. Shouldn't be difficult. Still strict. Definitely could feel the difference. Oh man, we were at four viewers a second ago. Um, but definitely easier than what I thought it'd be. 
but now is when I start adding weight and like every little jump is like, oh. but I'm also drawing back the val volume so I should have more, plenty of glycogen to uh, recruit from. Weird note, when I drink water, you can hear me going gloop, gloop, gloop when I'm, when I'm drinking it, so. You're welcome. So I have an idea. If I, man, part of me wants to do a 10 pound jump, the other part of me is ready for another 20 pound jump just to get up to 125. Just to be right under my 135 mark and see how many reps I can get there. And then, really, I'd like to do at least one 135. I'd be happy. I would be happy. Because it's been a while, I like, months since I've done like actual shoulder press so but the good thing is is I can make this place as messy as I want to be able to get what I want to put on what I want and take off what I want and set up where I want so yeah, I'm going to just put on these uh, 25s in here Pretty simple, I don't want to hit myself in the head when I get these off. Because of my goals for today to accomplish, we're gonna go 125. We'll do another 20 pound jump. Do another 20 pound jump, call it good. Well, not call it good, but sometimes I don't know what I'm saying until I say it. So we need a five pound plate on each side, and then I will effectively be at 40 pounds on each side, and we will have 125. So, again, not a lot of weight, not as strong as I'd like to be. Even though I was lifting plenty early on in life, I didn't know what I was doing. So aside for push-ups and dumbbell curls, I didn't do anything for years. But I have been lifting for a lot of years. So, whew, five reps, 125, and hopefully a single. Oh, hello. Lightweight, baby. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. You know. You know. Man, Ronnie Coleman still to go after all this time. Though I have to say, if you're not Ronnie Coleman and you're in the gym and you are yelling that, really, really loud. It, it can be a little weird, a little socially awkward, but it is pretty cool that uh, we have a we have a true Ronnie fan out there. You know what I'm saying? You're awesome. You're awesome. Thank you for commenting that. And uh, I, I don't know how to say your name. I will severely mispronounce it. Suhit? I'm assuming the J is pronounced with an H. I'm going to say Suhit. And then uh, Leopold's, Revish, Leo. I'm starting to work it out in his overhead. It, it is, it is very difficult to progress because there's a lot less muscle recruitment than let's say bench press. Peck is a bigger muscle than the anterior delt, but it is still, uh, it's still something that you can use as an accessory exercise to help strengthen for overall pushing movements. I love doing it. Um, when I was on my bulk, my overhead press went super high. And like I said, I got up to 135 and then I plateaued. Um, and that's something that I didn't get a chance to solve as to why I plateaued and get past the plateau. Once I hit that plateau, I was stuck. So it was three for three, 135. I'm hoping to get back up to 135 and then blow past it. Um, so we'll see what happens. So we're going to knock this out. I'm, I should be plenty of recovered. My shoulders are feeling pumped. Um, but yeah, yeah, some accessory exercises to help make sure your overhead press goes up is you can work on dumbbell overhead press, get that a lot stronger because sometimes it's a stability issue, sometimes it's a form issue, sometimes it's a synergistic muscle, muscle issue, so you might need stronger triceps. So just kind of balance it out, sometimes if someone who knows what they're doing is watching you do it, they can kind of help you figure out where the weak point is in the lift and where to work on. So, hopefully, I can get five with this. We'll see what happens. No, positive affirmations. This is going up. 
Yes, I'm YouTube live streaming. Yes, I'm wearing my most comfortable shoes. Yes, I'm wearing a buff Rick tank top. Yes, this is going up for five. Positive affirmations. It actually does wonders. So this is going to be easy. Easy five. Yeah, put it. Wait, wait. Oh, this is a home gym, so I feel weird yelling, but it also feels so right. Here we go. See, I told you I hit the ceiling. I always do that. Wow, my head. Oh, it's uh... oh, man, scary, wasn't it? Uncanny Valley video. It's terrifying. It even scares me. Are you talking about the long one? The, or the? Because I made shorts of the long one, but also the the short short one. Super creepy, right? It's actually uh, my sister-in-law's idea. But don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. That's secret. That's secret. It's super, super real. If your biceps are doing a lot of the work when you're doing rows, arms aren't as strong as your back. Um, that can be one explanation, but it also depends on the angle of your arm when you're rowing back. Like, are you rowing like this? Or are you rowing like this? You know, if you're rowing like this, you're curling it. You're curling it with really weird technique. If you're doing this, you're actually rowing it. And if you can tell the difference is I don't have as small of an angle here. Here, that angle really decreases. So that means I have more flexion. You wanna make sure that you're, you're just pulling back with your elbows. Pretend your arms or hands are hooks. So you just hook the weight and then row it back. A lot of people, they'll curl it up as they're rowing it back. And that's just something you kind of got to actively cue yourself, cue yourself on to kind of like help make sure that everything kind of goes together the way you want it to and not be like, oh, my arms, they're on fire. It's like, you did a row. That's not what you're working. But in actuality, it's, it's just fine. That happens all the time. It happens all the time. Just when you're doing a row, Tell yourself, my hand is a hook and just elbows, elbows back. Because if you bring it up like this, then you're curled in the weight. So, but it's good that you're, uh, you're taking that into account. You're thinking about it. So there's a lot of lifts that that happens, especially with overhead pressure. Your hands are too far in, you'll start feeling on your triceps. So that's why I got to make sure I'm just right outside of my shoulders when I grab onto the bar. Because if I'm in... I might feel stronger because I'll have more tricep recruitment, but my triceps will fatigue and burn out way before I'm done with the exercise. So, okay, so I did five, hit the ceiling once, so no damage. We're good, we good. Now I need a one. I know for sure after hitting three on that, I could do 135, just pop, 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 pop. So, why in the top of the uncanny vid says run? Uh, to be honest, I thought it'd be cool. Um, I don't want to ruin the magic, but I thought it necessary to say run. I thought it was necessary because you're just going to walk in there and be like, sup, random thing that's in my, in my house. <laughs> That'd be creepy. So, you know, it, it's about uh, developing the environment for some of those videos. I'm not good at it, but sometimes I'm decent. Okay. Okay, let's, what are we doing here? All right, so we take the five off. But yeah, I, those uncanny videos are super fun. They're creepy, but they're fun. They're really fun. They are, something about it, something about that's really exciting. I don't know, if you, if you haven't seen the long version of the uncanny video, go check out the, the long version. Um, my wife set up all the shots and wanted to direct that as a story and it came out super well. Absolutely love it. And it's one of the better videos on my channel that are long form content that's like, it's doing well. So 
Tips for reaching your first pull-up. Um, uh, there's actually a lot of things you can do. Um, heavy, heavy lat pull-downs, as long as you can kind of anchor yourself to the seat, because then you can just focus on that drive. Um, the next progression, I would say, because it requires more body control, is a pull-up with an assistance band. So get an assistance band, wrap it up on top of the pull-up bar, hang it down, put your foot or your knee into it, and then do pull-ups that way until you get such a thin band, it's pretty much just you doing it, and then you should be able to do the first one on your own. And also you can do dead hangs on the pull-up bar. You can do negatives where you just jump up, slowly let yourself down. How many, either way, lot, lots of ways to be able to get to your first pull-up. Um, the important thing is be consistent, progressive overload. Make sure you're pulling down or pulling up heavier loads every time that you do it. So, and then eventually you'll be able to do your first one. How many views on the long uncanny vid? So the long uncanny vid, I think we're just a little under 300 now. Like that's a lot for my channel. Um, I don't think that YouTube pushes my videos to the right audience initially. So my click through rate and everything's like super low. And so my videos just stop getting pushed. So the people that I want to see it just don't get to see it. And you're welcome for the advice. Leopold's, Revish, Revish. Anytime, if you have any more questions, feel free to put them down, I'll answer them. I got plenty of time, I got more work I have to do. But the views on the long form on Candy Vid, it's like just under 300, I think. It might be over now, I don't know. I think it's still under. Um, but yeah, it, like it's stuff fun for that. I wanna be able to get a lot of views. I'd like to do this full time. Talk to people, make fun content. Um, there's just a lot of people I'd like to be able to help out, like answer questions for. I've, I've been a personal trainer for like f over five years, so it's, it's fun to be able to help people. And also, I like being creative. I like making fun short films because I, I just like being creative. I like having an idea and bringing it to life or helping people who have an idea and bring it to life. It's really, really fun, especially the process. So, yeah, the long form on Canada is pretty fun. And if... If you have any ideas for other short form, long form content that you'd like to see, please leave some suggestions. I'm always open to suggestions. My brain gets fuzzy and sometimes I just can't think of anything. More than happy. I can set up like a team dynamic thing. Oh! I hope you enjoy the long, uh, long form uncanny video. Let me know what you think in the comments on that video, please. We haven't done many short films before, so I know that there's a lot of edges that we need to refine out. But for early on, I enjoy all the short, 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 short films that we do. It's very fun. All right. Well, we are at one thirty-five. If I can, I'll do two. Um, but I am just gonna mentally be like one and then if i do the one and it's like oh that that was easy i'll just pop up another one real quick the hardest part's getting it out of the hole right now so and not tripping on my mat oh man i said that and i'm scared all right here we go so 135 for a single possibly a double everything's feeling pretty okay uh i usually have to do a pop up on the first so let's see what happens Not gonna lie. Technically three, if you count the assist, the first one, and the slight lack of range of motion on the last two. Cause I just went past the chin on the way down and then I'm gonna come back up. I didn't try to get super low. It's just, the shoulder's starting to ache just at the dippy duppy. So I gotta do, clearly do some more shoulder rehab on that one. But I didn't expect to be able to do that, so. Pretty happy, pretty happy. Now that I've worked all the way up to that, it's time for some lateral raises. And I think for the sake of volume, because I hit lateral delts twice a week. Sorry, mouth's real dry. I hit lateral delts twice a week. Um, once on chest day, once on shoulders. 
Um, so, and I typically just do a typical lateral raise, but I think if I break it in half, I can do three sets of a regular lateral raise and then superset it with a decline lateral raise to work it at the bottom range of motion. Pretty excited about that. Um, or the first one's not meant to be counted. You can count the first ones if you want. No, no one has official rules unless you're competing, you know? And in that case, if you're competing, then they'll have their own specific rules on whatever competition that it is. However, this, um, I just didn't count my first one because I did a little bit of a pop-up because I took a deep breath, walked out from it, stayed braced. I didn't breathe out, take another breath. So I was like, ooh, hello, Victor. Nice to, nice to have you. Thank you for joining and thank you for commenting. Um, but I just personally, a lot of times I don't count my first rep because that mentally pushes me to do at least one more. And sometimes the, the body will be like, oh, you've done plenty. You're tired, you're fatigued, you've reached the end. When in actuality, you do have more. It's not that every time, but it is a lot of the times. So we are going to go ahead, lateral raises. And like I said, we'll do two variations of the exercise today and see how my shoulders feel. So I'm gonna grab some weight, don't go anywhere. I'm just gonna grab these. I love all the jokes that they have on lateral raises when they're like, when you go to pick out the weight for your lateral raises and someone grabs like a five pound dumbbell or like a two pound dumbbell. I think, I think it's funny. Um, not that what I'm about to do is gonna look fantastic, but a rule that a trainer told me is sometimes the body just doesn't care whether it looks good or bad, unless you get injured. Then it does care, clearly. But we are going to do that. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it'd be. I thought my shoulders were going to be more fatigued. I hope someone was counting. Please tell me someone was counting. I, I stopped counting and then my head said eight, and I was like, oh gosh. So, if you were counting, please let me know how many I did. Gosh dang it. It's not enough. Way too little of the reps. Not enough. But, uh, I mean, some people might think, God, oh, I'll have to do some more. I'll do some more right now. I'll do some more. That's way too low. No, yeah, okay, that, that'll help. Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the long form uncanny, uncanny video. I do have to say, without the, the static effects, over the thing. It kind of loses a little bit of the creepiness, but the story is more enveloped, the angles are better, the quality is better. But I am hoping you enjoyed it. I'm really tired. I had to sit through two hours of makeup to record the long one, so. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, so we'll do three sets of these lateral raises right here, and hopefully, Someone says, yeah, your form looks weird. You're doing it wrong. So I can explain why it might not look like when normal people do lateral raises because this is the correct way. And anyone who says otherwise is wrong. Unless you're a bodybuilder, then you kind of got to work from multiple angles and stuff. But anyway, so yeah. All right, man. Whew. Got a nice little pump. <sighs> and a little lightheaded. By lightheaded, I mean foggy headed, and I'm getting tired. Yeah. <sighs> Building my my physique to look like Batman or Superman, either way. They're the true dynamic duo. Whew. But yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. I'm gonna do another set. Any questions about any of my other videos or workouts? Yes. I see your arms. Arms are a little too straightforward. If uh, you're talking about like me coming out versus straight to the side, um, staying within the scapular plane versus like 
right out to the side can help decrease on trap recruitment. There's nothing wrong with going out to the side, um, but I do feel a noticeable muscle activation difference when I go from the side to slightly in front. And I definitely feel it more here than I do here or anywhere else in my shoulder. And one thing is if I'm going straight out to the side, a lot of times I'll just deepen my shoulder. It'll feel a little bit uncomfortable. That is pers my personal experience with slight angle forward scapular plane versus directly out to the side. So that's something that I studied and did it myself. So I don't just take studies for face value. I also do it to see how it feels. And for me personally, I just haven't done them straight out to the side since, unless I'm about to do the other variation. That is straight out to the side. But that does have a slight different variation to it. So. I lost count again, but um, I definitely did more than eight that time. I had to have. Well, whichever video you clicked on, I hope it was mine that was way, way creepy. I wear a lot of makeup for that. Or did I? Maybe it was just somebody else in the house. <laughs> just someone appears just right there. That'd be awesome. We'll call him Steve. What's his name? We've got one more set of these, and then we're gonna take a 10 pound dumbbell and do decline lateral raises. That'll be fun. I need to sneeze. But yeah, God, and after I do that, man, I really gotta start plowing through some of this. It's already 1.30. I don't know, I'm having fun talking to you guys. It's fun, it's fun having you here. It's like working out with other people here because technically you are here, so it is nice. So I just went a little slower. <sighs> One more set of that and then uh, hit two of those and then some leg exercises. Unless I just do legs tomorrow. Might just work in some leg stuff tomorrow. Yeah, I might do that. I'll do one leg thing today, but maybe tomorrow I'll do some more. Definitely doing some boxing stuff tomorrow. That's for sure. So, uh, we got more people in here to witness my special technique form. By special, I mean it's just scapular plane lateral raises. Not gonna lie, I started running out of breath there. One second. Oh my goodness. Yes, I died multiple times. Whew. All right, farewell, Leonel Le Leopolds. Thank you for joining me anytime. Join me anytime, follow the videos, and just leave your questions wherever. I'll be able to get back to you. So I'll see you next time. The uncanny shirt you didn't make up or what? Oh, that one, we, man, we, uh, there was a couple things we had to do. I don't think we did so much makeup on that one. That one was some nice post effects. So it's kind of, kind of technological stuff to do on that one to, for the most part for the the effect of our creepy faces well i'm out of water and i'm severely thirsty that's great let me set this up over to the side oh this one's weird this one's just weird we'll turn it down just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. It's gonna be a little weird. 
Oh, yeah, that angle is not my friend. All right. Let's knock these out real quick. We're not going to do many. Now, I covered this. Oh, my goodness. Don't do that. I'm going to put my foot up there so I don't slide off to my death. So, I saw a few bodybuilders do this, and then Sam Solik made it famous. Um, we have the dumbbell here, right off to the side. And we're going to lift straight off to the side, just right there. 10 pounds is a lot of weight for this. Now, if you want, if you want your shoulders to burn, do that. I'm gonna turn away from you for a minute. That was mean. I'm sorry. If, if you have any questions or anything, I'll just comment them and I'll see them soon as I turn around. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We'll do one more set of those. Woo! That burning. Yeah, that, the, is, again, I'm just gonna call them a decline lateral raise, doing it like that. It's very intense because, like with pause squats, box squats, um, rack pulls, regular deadlifts. Um, oh, what's the other one for bench? What's the other one for bench? Floor press. Having to start at a dead, from a dead stop is insane. It makes things so much more difficult because the amount of neural drive muscle recruitment you need just to start it back without any stretch reflex or anything, it's very intense. I'm live streaming at 11 p.m. I don't know what time frame you're in, so I don't know what 11 p.m. would look like for me. Um, you got a big plan? You're gonna rally everyone behind? And I do that? Because I'll do it if there's a big audience, for sure. But I don't wanna do two more hours of makeup and then like show up and have like two people in the live stream. I mean, luckily we've had a nice amount of people in here <laughs> for today's one, um, just on and off through the whole thing. And thanks to you, auto test and uh, Leopold's. Um, I've had a lot of interaction to be able to do this, made it very fun. But uh, man, two hours of makeup to come do a live stream? You'd, ha you'd have to promise like a nice big audience. Because <laughs> I don't mind it, as long as I had also like planned to record a video. I mean, it maybe it'd work, maybe it'd work. Maybe I'll just like go set this up somewhere and go stand in the corner with the makeup on. It would be fun, it would be fun. Maybe I'll do it, maybe I'll do it anyway. Actually sounds kind of fun. Ooh. But two hours of makeup? Possibly more. So we gotta get some we gotta get some other makeup to help increase the uh, the effects of the uncanny thing. Oh, I have to say I'm working on my channel's lore. Oh my goodness, I'm dead. Oh, that's all I can do. My lateral delt is fried. But, uh, yeah, yeah, um, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I will. Unless you're like, Psh, I got 1,000 people showing up. I'll be like, oh, okay. We have an audience to entertain. But you can't tell them that it's makeup. You gotta tell them it's real. <clears throat> can't ruin the illusion. No. Oh. Oh, that's good enough. My right shoulder is more fatigued than my left shoulder. I don't know why that is. Oh, everything's gonna pause just for a second. So I'm not going anywhere, it's just pausing. And I'm back, I'm back. The video just resumed. My shoulders are dead. I'm gonna sit under this 
perfectly positioned barbell for some Final Fantasy stuff to happen. So, and do some rear delt rows, which we will do together. I mean, I can't read this from here, so I'll scoot you a little bit closer. Scoot you a little bit closer, yeah. That'd be good, that'd be good. All right, so rear delt rows, huh? We'll go up a little bit and wait on those. Those are the same ones we just did some lateral rolls with. And uh, get that rear delt rocking and rolling, huh? I don't know what it looks like from up there. It's a really weird angle. What? Bloom, Bloom House? Ooh. Bloom House. Well, my, the nice thing is my shoulders are very, very pumped up. And uh, after this next set, I'm going to I need something to drink. I'm thirsty. After this next set, we're going to start stretching for a uh, at least one leg exercise, just in case if I don't get around to it tomorrow. Probably it's between sissy squats and Bulgarian split squats. I don't know what it'd be. What's that Bloom House fit in the gym? Man, the um, the Insidious one. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the only one that is Bloomhouse related. I can't remember all the uh, other ones that I've done. There's Tim's Big Adventure. There's Why I Like the Rain. There's the Insidious one. Uncanny Valley. There's another one. I don't remember which one it was. But the Insidious one, the Bloom, that should be the Bloom House one, the Insidious one. That one was really cool, except for the effect we had to use at the very end. It just didn't blend well. Oh, the Tiny Tim one. Yeah, that's, that's the little Insidious inspired one. Man, really good, really good. You know, again, we are working with what we got, which isn't much. And sometimes you gotta, you, you gotta sacrifice quality somewhere but it's part of the process of getting better even if something's not like you know Hollywood quality we still we still post it because um, I mean we can only do so much with what we have and that one that one was really fun to make so yeah it should be the insidious one with the tiny Tim music and everything that one was that one was fun to make <sighs> Okay, now it's time to start stretching to add some legs to this this workout today. And then I gotta charge my phone because it's almost dead. It is. We are just shy of phone death. Just shy. Whew. Balance is key. Balance is key. Ooh. Right. Oh my goodness. finish the, the live stream at shoulders because I'm running out of things to say. I got one more set. So, don't do that. I nearly fell. But I'm too good. Nothing can stop me. Nothing. But, uh, anyway. Um, auto text. Please do continue to follow the channel. I do Enjoy talking to you. Thank you for taking such interest in some of the projects that we've done, the shorts and the, the long form short, short movie for the Incanet Valley effect. So please do follow you along and uh, hopefully I can continue to, well, me, my wife or my sister-in-law, whoever 
ends up directing the next project. I hope that we can continue to provide good quality content for you that's still very spooky. So I hope you do enjoy it uh, with the next one and um, everything else. I do have one more set, so I'm not going anywhere just yet. But uh, I just want to big thank you for everyone who's joined in today's live stream and talked to me, made comments, asked questions, um, liked the video, or just been here to watch. So thank you all for being here. This isn't my outro yet. We got one more set of poorly positioned camera rear delt rows. And then, uh, yeah, after that, I'm gonna do some leg work off camera. Cause I don't want anybody to see that. I don't know how this is gonna go down. Mostly cause my knees still feel achy. So anyway, that I need to charge my phone. So let's, uh, when I'm down here, you barely see nothing. That's crazy. We'll try that. That's a lot better. All right, we're done, Rose. last few reps were very very poor I do understand that but I do want to say again thank you everyone for joining me thank you for being here thank you for talking with me thanks for enjoying my content thank you for being awesome thank you for being amazing if you managed to watch through most of this video you're better than everyone else and I can say that why can I say that because I can so and my typical outro is stay strong stay grinding and stay smiling I will see you all in the next live stream. Till then, be awesome. Be great. I'll see you then. And uh, make sure to follow the channel. See what we're doing next. And uh, I've already said, see you next time. So now I'm just going to awkwardly turn off the camera. <laughs>